All right, NaNoWriMo is gone and I'm ready to talk about programming again. In the previous episode, I talked a bit about the theory and history of Agile. You know how things should work in an ideal world and why, but beautiful theories often fall apart in practice. Sometimes because they're just wrong, but more often it's simply because of people. People have a history of not fitting well into theories. We're unpredictable, we're not able to separate work from private life. We talk in different languages, sometimes literally. So when you get a bunch of people and make a team out of them, and then make them work with other teams, also made of people, things happen. Theories are cherry-picked. Shortcuts are taken. Hacks are developed. Mistakes are made. Passive verb constructions are used to avoid responsibility. But despair not. Fortunately for us, a lot of teams have already tried to use Agile in practice for a long time, and through trials and errors, they somewhat developed a set of practices which uh, more or less work and can be reproduced with confidence. That framework is made of Scrum and Kanban, sometimes sprinkled a bit with extreme programming. Of course, the exact mix differs from one company to another, and also within a company, and also changes in time even within one team. So I guess I'll just give you an example based on my experience. Full disclosure, a few years ago I passed an exam and I have a certificate of the Professional Scrum Master 1. The course consisted mostly of theory, definitions, terms, roles, how they interact, and how an ideal team should work together. The theory in Scrum relies a lot on those precise definitions and that people performing the roles should act precisely within the framework defined in Scrum. But the practice is not like that. In practice, one person often has to fulfill two, or more likely one and a half, roles in Scrum. Or maybe a piece of this, a piece of that, and a piece of something completely else. Almost always a Scrum team is plunged into a much bigger framework of a large company that doesn't work according to Scrum rules, and when they are introduced, the rules, it, the company, tries to bend them. So, okay, we have a team of developers, the team has a team leader, who can be either a senior developer with a knack for organizing the work of the team, or more of a manager type, whose main responsibility is organization and communication, and coding takes only a part of their time. In theory, the tasks of the team leader should be split among the Scrum Master, the product owner, or we will get to that, and a senior developer. Scrum doesn't have the role of a team leader. That was one of the things which drew me to it. From a more philosophical and political perspective, Scrum looks quite anarchic in nature. All roles are equally important, and the process relies on that people are professionals and can work out solutions through discussion, without an authoritative figure telling them what to do. The Scrum Master is there to facilitate the discussion and prevent conflicts, not to be in charge. In practice though, having a team leader taking charge of the Scrum Master duties is a common sight. Alright, so we have this person here, and team members here. The team members vary in experience and specialize in different areas, but their skills should also overlap partially, so that not one developer is indispensable. I talked about it in the video about the real programmer myth. If you let people over-specialize, and one of them has to take a break, for some reason, you're in trouble. But if you force them all to learn the same things, you probably make them miserable and lose on productivity. One curious case is a QA developer. Someone who should be a very important person in the team, but who is often delegated to a separate QA team and only lent to the dev team. That's okay. Things can work like that, especially if the QA team works closely with the dev team. Although, I wouldn't advise the QA developer to work separately, contacting with the others only through emails, Slack or Jira. That makes the feedback on bugs and overall quality to take way too long. Okay, let's do something. From Scrum comes the idea of a sprint, and a sprint planning. Every two or three weeks we sit together for about an hour and plan what our work will be in the next two or three weeks. In theory, a sprint should be a very clearly outlined time of development, with a defined goal which at the end of the sprint is reached and some kind of a product a new functionality or an evidence of that certain bugs were fixed, is presented to the product owner. We assign ourselves to some tasks, we talk about them on daily stand-ups, we switch if needed, or we pair to do some pair programming. We take new tasks when the old ones are finished, and at the end of the sprint, we have something to brag about. Strangely enough, 
Scrum does not define how exactly do we keep information about the tasks and what's their progress. Here's where a task board from Kanban comes into play. A board with post notes on it is such a symbolic part of Kanban that people often mistake it for the whole of Kanban. Yet, ripping it out of Kanban and uh, sewing it together with the rest of Scrum is a bit like building up Frankenstein's monster. But on the other hand, we do things like this all the time in IT, wiring together unfitting parts of different libraries and frameworks, so it feels strangely natural to do it. Anyway, the board consists of at least three columns. To do, in progress, and done. To the left of to do lies backlog, the bottomless abyss of all the tasks everyone reported at some point in the past. The tasks can be sorted according to their priority, their severity, the date of creation, and so on. During the planning, we decide what can be taken from backlog into to do. Ideally, we should start with an empty board put some tasks in to-do, knowing from experience how much we can do during the sprint, then decide on who does what, and slowly, during the sprint, move the tasks from to-do to in-progress, and then to done. Very often, between in-progress and done, there will be also a review column. A task put in that column should be assigned to another person than the one who worked on it. That reviewer should take a look at the code and or test it and either put it back in, in progress together with some notes or move the task to done. At the end of the sprint, all tasks should be in done, the team can congratulate themselves and sit down to plan another sprint. In practice, we almost never start with a clipboard. There are always tasks left from the previous sprint, either because we were too optimistic about them or we didn't have full knowledge what they involve or they were shots from the side, tasks introduced to the board in the middle of the sprint. A common solution is to leave the in-progress and review columns as they are, clear done, and put tasks from to-do back to backlog. Then we discuss if we want to pull them back to to-do, or maybe something different became more important. But where the tasks come from? One main source, of course, is bugs. They may be reported by the customers, by the QA team running automated tests or manually testing the app's interface, and they might also be found by developers while they work on a different task. The other main source is new or enhanced functionality. And here comes the product owner, or should come if it was really Scrum. Product owner is a person in between people who want new functionality and developers. Essentially, they're a translator from corpus speak to nerd speak. Product owner talks to the managers or the sales or whoever needs to be talked to, figures out what they want, then talks to the dev team, and as a result of that discussion, the task board gets flooded with new tasks. That role might sometimes be performed by the team leader, but that's a very large burden on top of the usual team leader's work. Another solution, apart from having an actual Scrum-style product owner, is to have feature teams. A feature team is a temporary team consisting of people from different teams gathered together to discuss, plan, implement, test, and finally release new functionality. It makes sense, especially in cross-platform applications where every new feature has its components written in different technologies and you have a team for each of them. For example, you are looking at a cross-platform application right now. Every web application is cross-platform because you have a front-end and a back-end part to it. So if we already have two teams, a front-end and a back-end team, then it starts to make sense to have even more, like a separate QA team and a team of designers. Then we pick people from each of these teams and create a feature team, only for the time needed to develop the feature. When the plan is ready, and everyone in the feature team more or less knows what to do, the devs selected from our team come back with a handful of new tasks. In Scrum, adding new tasks should happen only at the beginning of the sprint, but the sprint is two or three weeks long. It's pretty common that the plan for a new feature is ready somewhere in the middle of it. What do we do then? Well, at the beginning of the sprint, when we already know that some of the developers will be involved in the new feature, we create a blob task for the whole duration of the sprint and assign it to those people. Then, when they know what does it involve, they can break this blob into smaller tasks. Working on a feature will almost always take more than one sprint. It would be awesome if we were able to split the blob task in such a way that new tasks could be put in backlog, pull in to-do, 
done during the sprint and then at the beginning of the new sprint we would have a clear board and we could fill it with more tasks from the blob. In practice though, the initial planning of our future is very imprecise. Many details become clear only when we actually sit down and implement the damn thing. And quite often they turn out to be new tasks and they have to be done now, they can't just be put in backlog to wait for the next sprint. So we do them now, and at the end of the sprint we have a full mongol horde of tasks in the middle section. Another approach, which I like, is to create a separate task board for the feature. The involved developers will still take part in daily stand-ups, but for the time being they use their own board for their own tasks, and they have their own sprint, which is as long as the feature development takes. Alright, that's basically it. I know I simplified and skipped a lot, so I will probably get back to the topic in the future. If you want to learn more about Scrum and Kanban, I leave some links in the description for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them here or ask me on Twitter. If you simply like the video or have any comments on the format, let me know as well. Thanks for watching. Next coming up, Git and GitHub.